While some, like many of you here, are warming up to the potential value of having one of these, I recently read an honest question on another channel that went like this. What are people doing with all this overpriced copper? I want to understand, but just can't get there. Well, if you have the same concern, or that nagging voice in the back of your mind, I'm going to tackle that question for us today. Hello fellow mutants, glad to see you all and read your comments. I've had similar ones here in the past, though I'll admit it's been a while. Perhaps the naysayers have gone, or I've swayed a few opinions. So let's break up the question I read. What are people doing with copper bullion? I have to guess a bit here, but since generally the comparisons for copper run up against silver in the community, or perhaps numismatics, my assumption is that the question is, are people grading, trading, or investing in it? With some exceptions, my educated guess is no. That's not to say that Pirate Stacker isn't selling some very attractive copper art bars, but I think generally, if you were to take a bar of copper to your coin shop, you probably wouldn't get a favorable deal. It's just not the place for it. It's like trying to sell whiskey to a wine mom. It's not the right audience. Now, the second part includes the statement that it's overpriced. That's a broad term, and I'm going to explore some specific examples in a bit, as you know I like to do. But I suspect it compares copper bullion pricing to scrap copper or even the market price. While you can find copper, especially impure copper, cheaper in some other forms, a typical pipe from Home Depot is not as cheap as you might think. I know since I've priced them for my own projects. Nothing's cheaper than some scrap you found, but unless you're Ray Sanford, you probably don't have a lot of access to copper scrap. And even if you do, unless you're a crazy mutant like me, you probably don't have a lot of tools to turn that ugly pile of various purities of copper into something portable or useful. And that doesn't take into account the skills and time of which, even for me, admittedly have been in short supply in the past. To do so without releasing a toxic cloud of fumes from your misshapen hoard, that is. So let's put aside scrap and think about better comparisons pound for pound. It was once suggested to me that a giant industrial wheel of copper wire might be one way to go. That may be true, but most people are going to go for what's readily available to them if you say copper wire, and I don't mean the copper-colored stuff at Hobby Lobby. So let's make an apples-to-apples -apples online purchase comparison. Here's a one pound bar of copper in a unique design offered by Liberty Copper. I have one myself. A very attractive item to hold in the hand and it's a little less than $20 today. Now let's get the less pretty but potentially more utilitarian copper wire and see how it stacks up price wise. I looked around for a few examples but found nothing under $20. I do think a spool of copper wire like this is a good idea to have on hand for sure, but it doesn't prove a point about copper bullion being overpriced. I'll touch on the angle of whether it's overpriced as compared to the spot price of silver in just a moment. So to the question now of what are people doing with copper? Without imposing my own reasons for collecting copper, too much on others, I'd wager based on what I've heard and read elsewhere that most copper stackers are in it for a few reasons. First off, it's an easy way to start stacking some kind of metal with value. The gateway metal, you could say. As I've often pointed out, you can get multiple fully formed and minted pure bullion copper rounds for less than the premium of a silver round. That's the difference between a silver bullion round's price versus the price of silver spot. For those who are not versed in the lingo, a premium means the cost you pay on top of the market price of silver in order to get a coin or a bullion round. The market price is what you're unfortunately generally offered by a coin or pawn shop, and what silver trades for in bits and bytes on the internet. But in order to get a fully formed pure silver coin physically in your hands with a pretty design stamped on it and some room for profit by the seller, you pay a few dollars more. It seems reasonable to me, but a lot of folks think they should just get the raw bits and bytes or paper price formed neatly into shiny coins 
in their hands magically at no additional cost. That said, I think it's fair to point out that premiums have gone up from what they were in the past. From what I've seen of late, you'll pay up to $6 on the premium for a typical generic sil silver bullion round. Considering I started stacking silver at a price point of about $14 per silver round, that is a significant price jump. On the other hand, it's good for the people that bought it at that price. A Silver Eagle coin, on the other hand, could be up to $40 or more, even when the spot price is only $25. Now back to copper. If you buy 100 copper rounds from Liberty Copper, such as those shown here, each round is only around a buck fifty by my calculations, but feel free to correct me. So even if a silver single generic silver rounds premium is six dollars, you could have four copper rounds in hand, whereas that premium just disappears into the ether. Could you barter those four rounds for something useful after a societal collapse? I think so, but that's my opinion, and we won't know the answer, hopefully, for a long time. Another reason people stack copper is that it's an easy way to get a desired design or a novelty coin. You want that Zombucks design, but you just want to pay a few dollars for it, so you get it in copper. Then there's my own reason for stacking. Post-societal collapse or apocalyptic barter and utility. Perhaps even barter for that table at the swap meet or for when the digital dollar tracks every purchase you make. Though I'm sure that's just science fiction. Well, except in China and everywhere else that wants to implement digital currencies that eliminate purchasing privacy. I realize this, this is a niche reason to stack bullion of any type, much less copper, since you'll hear the regular recommendations around fractional or junk silver for a similar purpose. But I am hard-headed on that idea and don't really want to educate a young trader on the roadside about the value of a dime actually being worth more than its face value because of silver content that dimes once had decades ago. Perhaps I'll come around to it someday. I do have a few constitutional silver coins in the old collection. But suffice it to say, non-government aligned copper coins as a mean of trade or barter is something that has happened repeatedly in history, including the Netherlands Indies Gulden or Dutch East Indies Stuiver, as I covered in my video on wampum. And while it might be novel in the stacking community, it's not a new idea in practice to have copper pieces represent small barter, with silver and gold representing larger denominations for trade. The utility part is a sort of two birds with one stone thing for me. I know it's hard to believe I might heat a needle and hammer this beautiful piece of copper into something else, but I could do so if needed in a pinch. And yeah, maybe that single spool of copper wire would go first. So, what's your situation and purpose to collect copper of any variety? Do you see it more as some kind of investment or trade item today, as a post-societal collapse barter, a useful metal, or all of the above? Where will you be when you plan to make use of it? Will you live out in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert and the only house in view is your own with only the glow of El Paso in the far distance at night? Copper won't be everywhere in that case. In fact, unless you want to risk a long trek in getting shot to steal some, you'll only have whatever you have. Or will you be in the middle of New York City, or right next to a half-built subdivision with empty homes, copper pipes ripe for the taking anywhere? Why do you collect it? Here are some other ideas. You collect a lot of scrap because someone else will pay you for it. You value the utility of copper and its many uses, and you have experience melting or heating and annealing it and forming it into desired shapes or for repairs for anything from electronics to cookware. You think you can barter with it, whether it be tarnished old pipe or a shiny copper bullion round. You think it will be worth more someday. Even if your retro copper bar from Liberty Copper isn't going to turn a profit at the coin shop today, someone might be willing to pay you a good price for it when copper like it is selling for double the price online. This is not a strong reason for me, but I do think it could certainly hold its value. And at the end of the day, people will pay for what they think something is worth to them, not some glowing numbers on a screen. Don't try to sell that whiskey to the wine mom again. 
for the copper scrap hoarders, where are you going to put all that scrap copper when SHTF? Are you going to sling a sack of pipes and assorted copper parts over your back while you roll a discount industrial spool of copper wire the size of a truck tire alongside the road? Or will you keep it in a pile in the back of your Atlas bunker with the idea that someone someday will pay you for it? Do you have the skills, tools, and time to take this and turn it into this? And if so, how much would it cost you to make that copper portable and pretty? Could you do that after SHTF with the tools available to you now after a grid down situation? Or are you thinking about having tanks of propane and such on hand? Some questions to consider in any case. So now for the plug. What's that you say? No, it's not for Johnny Apocalypse Seed. Though I did just upload a new episode today and enjoy your feedback on those as much as I do writing them. No, today I have an announcement. Liberty Copper has offered to team up with me on some giveaways and discounts. If you are interested in buying copper anyway, as I mentioned before, the prices are very low and I would not recommend something I would not buy myself. Go back and see my old videos touting the prices of Golden State Mint's copper deals. Liberty Copper somehow manages to offer that kind of pricing every day, not just during sales. So I took them up on it. If you use the links in the description, I may even get some credit at the end of the day to help me buy a little more caffeine needed to keep writing for more videos. You see, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, only a bit, so I usually like to write out my videos before I speak them. And that doesn't count all the bloopers I make on audio along the way. So give them a look and see what you think. Well, that's all I have for today. Until next time, share your thoughts with me. It's Copper Mutant, signing out.